So in this example, as I mentioned, guys, whenever you have a fraction divided by another fraction, the main important thing is to multiply by the reciprocal. Because what's nice about that, if you were to kind of put these in parentheses here, you guys can see that each of these are now separated by multiplication, right? Do you guys see each of these quantities are separated by multiplication? Therefore, we can apply that division property I just spent five minutes explaining. So now, multiplying a fraction by its reciprocal, doesn't matter how crazy the fractions look, is automatically going to equal 1. So now, however, so now our denominator is equal 1. But remember to keep equivalent fractions. If you had the fraction 4 over 5 and you just multiply the denominator by 2, you now have 4 over 10. Those are not equal to each other. But if you have 4 over 5 and you multiply by 2 over 2, you get 8 over 10. Do you guys agree with me that 4 over 5 is equivalent to 8 over 10? Yes. yes. So whatever you multiply in your denominator to produce equivalent fractions, you have to multiply in your numerator. So basically, for your complex fractions, you're just going to multiply by the denominator's reciprocal in the numerator and the denominator. Now, over here, the problem with this is these look very similar to each other, right? Yes. They're almost the same, but they're not. So, but one thing I could do is this is negative, that's negative. That's positive, that's negative. I could always factor out a negative, which would make that a negative. Actually, let's do that in black. If I factored out a negative here, that would turn that to negative and that to positive. Would you guys now agree that those two are the same? What do you mean, sure? <laughs> negative x, negative x. Positive y, positive y. They're just flip-flopped around. Yes? I'm, I'm just factoring out. I'm not changing the value of anything. For instance, if I had the example x plus 3, right? And let's say I factor out a negative. When I factor out a negative, that makes that negative, and that makes that negative. Do you agree with me that negative times negative x and negative times negative 3 is the same thing as positive x plus 3? It's the same thing. So factoring is not changing the value. It's just rewriting it in a different format. Does that make sense? So since I factor out the negative, notice, negative times negative x is still, that's still equal to positive x. Negative times positive y is still equal to negative y. So I didn't change the value. By multiplying by the reciprocal, I changed the value, right? That's why I had to do that on top and bottom. But factoring, I didn't change the value. I just, fa I just changed the, note, um, the form, so now I could apply the division property. Just remember, though, there is a negative 1 there, though, still. All right. Then we can use our rules of exponents. 6x squared divided by x cubed. x squareds will divide out. That will leave me with a 1 on the bottom. So my final answer is going to be a 6 over negative x. And we can just write the negative out in front. Anybody have any other questions on that? No? Yes. So if the 